go out drinking with your friends. Sometimes, you know, you hit the sweet spot, you have a great time, but other times you go a little bit over the top, you can even black out. I'm not proud of those moments. And of course, they're very dangerous, detrimental to your muscle building process, your recovery, and even your fat loss process, as I'll get on to. So in this video, we're gonna break down what's the smartest way to drink alcohol when you're building muscle and trying to lose fat. Hit the subscribe button. Let's get into it. So we're first gonna go into how alcohol can completely mess you up. And then we're gonna go into the strategies of incorporating alcohol in a very smart way into your diet. Because let's be honest, if you're not someone that has completely decided to cut out alcohol from their life, which obviously if you decide to do that, it's your life, that's great for you actually. But for those of us that wanna continue drinking, continue enjoying a glass of wine and, and some cocktails, we're gonna talk about the strategy of how to do that. The first thing that you have to realize is what the hell is alcohol? There's a story of how like the first alcohol was invented, it's a myth. There was honey that was falling from like the honeycomb, whatever, into the pit of a tree. The honey would go off, right? It would get fermented, ethanol would be produced, and then the squirrels or the rats or whatever would go and eat this from the puddle and then they would be all dizzy and drunk from it and then the humans that saw it were like wait clearly he's having a great time i want to get me some of that tried it felt good and there we have it we have alcohol now who knows if this is true or not it's a good way to remember alcohol is essentially fermented sugar sugar and carbs makes you want to eat more sugar and carbs as soon as you start eating it you start eating a bowl of rice you want three you start eating a cookie you want three the reason for that is twofold on the one hand sugar targets the reward centers in your brain the dopamine centers it gives you a dopamine hit give me more of that give me more of that dopamine hit i like it another thing is that sugar increases blood sugar which increases insulin this hormone that comes out to control your blood sugar level insulin's job is to turn excess calories into fat it's insulin's job to store fat it's also insulin's thing to block leptin another hormone from telling our brain that we're actually full that it's time to go use the energy that we ate right so when you eat sugar and carbs you actually don't realize you're full even though you technically are. Does that make sense? So you have all these processes going on when you drink alcohol, when you have sugar, that's gonna make you eat more, which is obviously not good for your fat loss journey. This brings us onto the next point, which is what alcohol does, is that it inhibits your discipline and your clarity and your decision-making capabilities. So you have all those processes I talked about, and then you have alcohol that inhibits your ability to like control yourself. Cause you're like, oh, you know, it's a night out, it's fun, it's just another drink. Oh, let's get a kebab. Oh, suddenly you can eat like huge kebabs, huge plate of fries, no problem. It's like you invented a new stomach. Why is that? It's alcohol, it's the sugar. Do you see how this triple process kind of sets you up in a weak position if you're someone who's trying to stay in a caloric deficit? And one night of binge drinking can actually set you back an entire week or two weeks worth of progress. The next thing is that alcohol messes with your sleep and therefore your recovery. This is a big point. Like even if you just have a glass of wine at 9 p.m., you know, if it's close to your bedtime, your heart rate, I know because I tracked it, your heart rate actually is elevated during your sleep, which means it's not the most restful sleep that you could get. When you're sleeping, that's usually when your body is recovering both mentally and and physically it's when your body's building muscle that you broke in the gym if you've been drinking guess what the body's spending all of that sleep trying to do digest the alcohol that you put in it that's what it's focusing on because it's trying to get the toxin broken down so that you can come back to baseline it's not thinking how can i elevate this guy above baseline by building in more muscle okay so now you know that's a pretty comprehensive picture of how alcohol is not that great for you if you want to build muscle if you want to lose fat i hope that's clear but let's not forget the fact there's more to life than having a six pack and looking good right sometimes you go on a date you want to enjoy a cocktail maybe you're a you're someone that likes a bit of whiskey maybe you're like me you love to enjoy a good red wine from italy you know like a like a barolo like a nebbiolo grape wine or you maybe you you live in france and you just have access to the most amazing wines at cheap prices there's these pleasures in life that we cannot deny so let's go into the strategy of how to actually drink in a smart way that's not gonna screw you up. So in order to do that, I'm gonna first give you like a 
tier of the best alcohols to the worst alcohol. You can kind of disagree with me, give me your take on it, all right? In the top tier, best alcohol, you got wine. I'm not talking about this sweet, sweet wine. I'm talking about just your standard red wine, dry white wine. This is good. There's even science saying, you know, a glass of red wine actually helps with your blood circulation and things like this. But wine is not excessively high in calories. It tastes good, it's healthy for you. Also in that tier, we have gin and tonic, which is one of the cocktails that is not that sweet, so it doesn't have high sugar content. It's just clean, it's simple, and if you use good gin, it's not gonna be too bad for you. Straight whiskey, good quality spirits, drank in their pure form is actually fine you know it's not excessively high in calories of course the alcohol content is high so you have to be very careful so then we get onto the medium tier and we got the beers there's this there's, there's now stuff coming out saying beer can be estrogenic that it might tank your testosterone i don't know how much science there is to back it up but beer generally is carbs so beer will make you feel bloated and a lot of calories that you would get less of in you know wine or pure spirits right that's why it makes medium tier those cocktails that are kind of not on the super sweet side but on the kind of savory sour lemony side you know what i'm talking about these cocktails are actually not too high in calories because it's not that sweet generally i say because let's say you get a negroni which is not that sweet but it's just super high in calories right so you got to be careful you got to do your due diligence that brings us to the bottom tier of drinks you kind of want to avoid this if you're no longer seven whoa 18 to 19 20 21 in the us if, you, if you're not just these young student life freshers week people you want to avoid the bad quality the tesco value vodkas these these just god knows what sold you kind of random drinks that just give you the worst headaches they're just low quality spirits any cocktail that is way too sweet uh, any cocktail that's got all kinds of milk and chocolate and blue liquid in it you don't know none of what's going on in there stay away from those that's it so there's your tier of the best to worst alcohols for muscle and fat loss take that at you know wh whatever value that it serves you and be smart with it. which goes on to the next point you know how many times a week how much can you drink you must know your limits you need to know exactly at which point your sweet spot is where you feel good after a certain point when it starts to decline you're in for a bad night you start saying this stuff that's just embarrassing and the next morning you wake up you're like oh my god why did i even act up like that who's been there we've all been there you need to know your limits so you stop embarrassing yourself and your body okay and usually it's gonna be about two cocktails it's gonna be about three pints of beer it's gonna be about half to one bottle of wine it is what it is stop taking pride in the fact that you can drink a lot and the less i drink the less i can drink it's actually better to have low tolerance to alcohol all right it saves you money and keeps you healthier so don't go for this college bro gym bro bravado and just opt for clean healthy drinks know your limits drink only only once, twice, maximum three times a week. I only really drink once or twice a week. Next, you want to drink with a very high protein meal. Because alcohol makes up the sugar and carb content of your macronutrient in a way, you want to actually balance that with a high protein meal like steak, you know, steak with red wine. This is a great combination. It's a good balance. As opposed to imagine having a fish and chips with beer. Who's been to the pub in England and had the most amazing fish and chips and beer? Sometimes you gotta have it. Look, sometimes you gotta have it. Obviously, that's a less smart combo than red wine with steak. It's because of the macronutrient balance. If you have battered fish with beer, that's double carb. That's like having kidney beans with rice, except in liquid format and alcohol format, which is worse. And some fish is even battered and fried in alcohol or something, right? Beer battered fish with beer. Imagine that. Suddenly you realize why well, all the guys at the pub got this massive beer belly action. Next point. The final point, and you may have even guessed it if you're someone that watches this channel a lot, is don't go into super guilty mode once you've had an episode of drinking. You've gone out with friends. Sometimes, like tonight, I'm invited to a engagement party dinner type thing with a bunch of old friends. Guess what? Wine is going to be flowing. Let's say I drink a bit. I go a little bit over the top. Tomorrow, I'm hungover. And I wake up and I go, oh my God, I'm such a failure. Why did I do this? 
oh, I, I recorded this video and I still did this. I'm such an idiot. Guess what that's going to do? It's going to release cortisol, release insulin. I want to get away from feeling crappy. So I'm going to go look in the fridge, get me some cookies. Don't be going into guilt. It happens to all of us. If it happens, you want to go into damage control. Okay, it was a one-off. Sometimes, you know, every, every, every half a year or a quarter of a year, things like this can happen. It was a good time. We were celebrating a good thing. It's all good. Let's get back on track. Have this kind of refreshed mindset. Forgetfulness is the guardian of sanity. It's why you blink. It's why we sleep. Because otherwise you'd go mad. Sometimes you have to forget, reset, and go again. It's all right. Okay? It's all right. That actually brings us on to the final point. And this is really, really the smartest way to drink. It's to look ahead to the moment when drinking is about to happen like tonight, right? You, you, I just know it's gonna happen. So the whole day, I've been very good. I went to jujitsu, I've been fasting, I only had like a light lunch, but you know, sufficient enough so that I'm not drinking on an empty stomach. I know that, you know, I, even if I drink a bunch of red wine, I'm not gonna be going way over my calories. So it's kind of looking ahead and planning. The more you just happen upon a situation, you're like, oh, I didn't expect it. But suddenly I had 10 pints of beer. These are the nights where you just, you get, you get knocked out. The, the unexpected punch is what knocks you out. Same with alcohol. So the smart way to do it is to plan ahead and adjust your life so that it can incorporate the fun without going over the top. Hope this video helped you guys. See you in the next one.